Thank you, Sister Luanda. Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, you can do better than that. You just sung a good song and prayed a good prayers, and, and now you're just going to come with a herb is that? Oh, no. Let's do it together. Happy Sabbath, amen. It's going to be a delightful day, a delightful time in the Lord, amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful this morning that you brought us here once again. Father, we, we have new faces among us. We've had faces that come back to see us, Father. We have those who come from other churches, Father. We ask you, Lord, as you open up your word to be with us, Father. Enlighten us, Father. Encourage us, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Looking at the Sabbath school lesson this morning, and me and my wife were able to uh, facilitate that one. It was always fun to have the missus up beside me. And it was talking about how to manage in tough times. And I just took a spin off of that, how to, how to, how to, power to have the power to minister through in tough times. They were talking about the keys to survival. Last week, I had a few moments to talk about um, revival for survival how we let God's word help us to get to where we need to be, amen? How we really apply ourselves in the situation, God will show himself because we know that through the, the Bible, the scripture says that his word will not return to him void, which means if you don't do it, most somebody, somebody else will. Take a look at First, first Peter, the fourth chapter. Verses 4 through 11. The extension of what was already said this morning because this is, this is what's happening. There's a change going on between verses 6 and 7. Peter is, if you know anything about Peter, Peter is, he is a, um, he's in Rome when he's writing this. Matter of fact, he even calls, in this book, if you go a little bit further, he even calls Rome Babylon. He's right in the middle of it. He is preaching to the people who are in Asia Minor. Um, these, are, these are Gentiles who are converted to Christianity. And he's trying to let them see that, although you know, the Jews have a history of association with the church, that they could have that same association through Abraham, through baptism, to be with Jesus, amen? So we're not limited. No matter where we come from, we all have access to Christ, amen? And Peter was letting them see that. Although it was challenging because there had some serious things going on. People were being persecuted. Uh, people were slaves. He was still trying to get them to keep the right mindset to survive in a crazy world, amen? And that's what we're trying to do today. We're, the, we're trying to survive because as things get worse, we still have to try to maintain, amen? It is not an easy thing to maintain when you see everybody else going left. And you're the only one going right. It's a challenge when you're out there on your own. But we just found out earlier that we're never alone as long as we have Christ in our lives, amen? Verse 7 says that, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Did I read that again? But the end of all things is at hand. We're talking about how to survive in this world. How to survive in the midst of revival. Because everybody doesn't want to be revived like you want to be revived, and everybody's not going to be revived in the same, in the same, um, same time frame. So we're going to always have challenges with people we know, with people we meet, and especially people that we know and love, amen? But the end of all things is at hand, talking about the end of the world and things are um, wrap it up, and it says, therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. A lot of us pray these mammy pammy prayers that, you know, so now you lay me down to sleep, which is a beginning of a good thing, but we have to make sure that we're being serious in what we ask the Lord to do for us. The young man who is leaving to go to school, don't worry. I've been, uh, we've been a lot of places. It's Adventist church, Adventist people everywhere. My three daughters all went to um, public schools, but they all had Adventist families that were helping them out no matter where they were. My daughter, um, my oldest daughter, she, she um, on Sabbath, she knew where she was going. She was going over to one of the, uh, the um, members' house, and 
they were the bodies up there sometime. And by the end of the, by the end of those couple of years, we were we were family. You know, you're never going to be alone as long as you apply yourself to keep God first. Amen. So mom and dad are not going to have to worry. You're going to find your place wherever you go. Um, Brother Nick, he uh, he's a Navy get man. He's been all around the world. He's he's there's Adventist churches on every continent. There's Adventist churches in just about every major city. You're not alone. And for those who don't know, when we pick up our Sabbath school books every Sabbath, everybody in the Adventist church, no matter what, no matter what our continent you're on, we're all study out of the same book. We're all studying the same thing. We all see the same thing. So it's not a, a ideal going on here that's not going on there. We do, we do our best to stay uniform. And that's another good thing, too. Verse 8. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Talking about bringing people in, talking about uh, revival. Be hospitable. This is verse 9. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. So for those who have a gift of hospitality, share that with somebody else. If you have a gift of singing, and you hear somebody else with a voice that may not quite be right, pull to the side. Work with them. You see somebody in need, you meet that need. Amen? Christ's method. He met the need, then he begged them to follow him. Amen? Verse 10, as each one of us has received a gift, Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God might be glorified through Jesus Christ, whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Anything we do should be done for the glory of God. Amen. And if there's no glory for God in it, quite simply do not. Oh, I know it's hard sometimes. You want to get out there and show how much you know and this, that, and the other, but people don't care how much you know. They know how much you care. That's right. You know, and we already heard that, but wouldn't you rather see a sermon than to hear one any day? Wouldn't you rather see one? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather know that that person that, that's, that's, that's dealing with you is a genuine person instead of them saying one thing and then you see them act another way? As I told you last week, that, that, that got me disillusioned with the church when I was young. Because what, was, what, was, what they were reading in the book, coming off the pulpit, wasn't, wasn't reflecting in the life. And that's a challenge to young people. That's a challenge to anybody. But when you talk about doing this and doing that, but then in reality you don't do it. Hypocritical is the word. I heard a preacher, I had a preacher preach a sermon one time about that. He said they call it amazing disgrace. Amazing disgrace. Let us not be disgraceful to God. Let us be able to, 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 to live up to what knowledge we have. Now, if you don't know, nobody knows it all. You don't act like you know it all either. Don't be running around here pious. Everybody needs help. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs encouragement. That's what we're here for, to encourage each other, amen? Now, let's go back to Peter for a minute. Now, Peter was over here writing this book. He was trying to tell everybody to stay focused. He was trying to tell everybody about the goodness of God. He was trying to get them to see uh, the benefits of God. He was telling them all this, but they were under persecution. They were under persecution when Peter was telling them that he said, the end of all things is at hand. And still be serious. They were under persecution. We know how we get when somebody aggravates us. We know how we get when we get mad at something. But he was telling them, no, 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 you must stay focused. Happy birthday, Benjamin. Thought I didn't know. But Peter is trying to let them know that even in the challenges, we still serve a God who is able. Amen. And Peter is, Peter is now, he's at the, at that, about that time, he's about 35 years into this thing. And if you want to know about Peter, for the first 15 years right after Jesus died, Peter was the man. The, 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 the people that were, were baptized at Pentecost, that was Peter. Paul didn't come on the scene to at least Acts, the 10th chapter. It was Peter. 
Peter was uh, he was he was leading out in um, Jerusalem. It was Peter who was there when they they, they had to choose the next the, the apostle that had to take the place of uh, take the place of Judas after he did what he did. Um, it was Peter in Jerusalem. It was Peter who was uh, who was trying to get people who, who was trying to help the, the church move forward. It was Peter who first went to Samaritans. It was Peter who received the Holy Spirit when he was dealing with the magicians. It was Peter who knew that it was time to leave Jerusalem. He knew he had to go other places. Believe it or not, he ended up in Rome. He ended up in Rome about the same time that Paul was about to be executed. So we see that Peter played a bigger role in, in, in the gospel that we might want to give him credit for because we love to talk about Paul. And Paul did his thing. I mean, Paul went from, went from being a persecutor, he getting knocked off a horse, to be doing been blind, to be given his sight back, to now being one of the being the one that wrote most of the, the New Testament. But Peter has his place, amen. Now Peter's telling them, look, there's a challenge that you're gonna have to deal with, and you're gonna have to deal with that challenge under persecution. But remember that he's fulfilling what Jesus already told him. Do you remember the little conversation that him and him and Jesus had? Go to John 20, 20, uh, John 21 for me. Verses 16 through 18. Now, this is after Jesus was getting ready to go. Jesus was getting ready to, to, to go be crucified and all that. Peter was talking about, you know, I, I'll go and, 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 and I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And Jesus said, look, before the, ro the rooster crows three times, you remember that, right? You're going to deny me. Now, the chapter ends right there. But remember, there are not no chapters. The Bible wasn't necessarily written in chapters originally. So the very next, at the beginning of the very next chapter, it starts out saying, in my father's house, there are many mansions. But you got to understand that this wasn't a beginning of a book. This was an extension. This was Jesus' response to Peter, although Peter didn't understand what's going on. Jesus had good news for him. He said, after the end of that, he said, you're going to deny me thr thrice. You're going to deny me three times. You're going to turn your back on me three times. But guess what? In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. Did he, 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 did he, told, he, he, uh, he confirmed Peter. He said, look, I go to prepare a place for you. You can't go. You can't do it. Only I can do it. I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I will come again. Didn't he go? Didn't he go? So we're looking for him to come back, amen? That blessed hope. But so now, Jesus is walking with Peter. And Peter, you know, he got, Peter got an answer for everything. You ever got, you got that person in your life? You got an answer for everything? No matter what you say. Sometimes I call him the one-upper. I've said this before. They, you say this, and they, you know, you talk about it, and they say, well, you know, that's okay, but uh, let me tell you about this. It's all they got to they one up. So Jesus had to shut Peter up. So John, 20, John the 21st chapter, 16, verses 16 through 18, Jesus is talking to him. He says, and he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter says, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved. You know, you don't get aggravated because you would ask him a question three or four times. He's about to come off. He's about to go off on Jesus. That would have been a mistake, but you know how y'all you know get. Because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And then Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said, now remember what he said up here at the first. He said, tend my sheep. Then it changed. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Then he went on. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. Now he's telling him the prophecy of what's going to happen to him. He didn't realize it yet. But now that we know the, the, the story, we know what happened. He says, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you 
and carry you where you do not wish. And if you don't know the story, Paul was, Paul was crucified in Rome. But Peter was also executed in Rome. So they, 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 his, his end, his fate was, all, was also there, amen? So, but he at the end, he couldn't go where he wanted to go either. Another's going to gird you and carry you where you do not wish. He was telling them that even after all this, even after he feeds the sheep, even after he does what he needs to do, there's still going to be a, a, a situation where he's not going to be able to handle. But because you love me, and because if remember Jesus already, he said, he, Jesus already told Peter one time also, he said, Satan wanted to sift you. Y'all remember that one? Satan wanted to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you. I hope he's praying for us these days because we've been doing some things in the name of Jesus that we should not even be thinking about doing. But Jesus, his love and his mercy, he is saying, look, I've prayed for you. And all you got to do is turn from your wicked ways. Amen. Amen. You still with me? So Peter is going to suffer that fate as well. But Peter did not let go. Peter was still telling people, time is winding up. Time is at hand. Time is winding up. Time is at hand. Yes, I know you're having a tough time. Yes, I know you're having a rough time. Yes, I know you're a slave. Yes, I know that, you know, it, turning away from your friends is a hard thing to do. But God is worth it. Amen. Play football in my younger days. Might not tell it now. But I was big and fast. So my coach tried to get me to play football. Tried to get me for about a year. Uh, I, I learned from talking to, with uh, Elder Neesmith earlier this week that he was a track star at one point. He, uh, so he knows a little bit about the, 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 af the athletic side of things. How many of you were, were, were decent athletes in high school? Ah, oh, look at you now, glory days. Leah, you got your head out, but Leah, Leah was a, he was a man too. But anyway, Bartley was a quarterback, believe it or not. Um, coach tried to get me to play, and I did everything I could not to play, but I did end up playing my last two years of high school. My first year, the team didn't do so great. Uh, we had a record of three and eight. It was terrible. So it wasn't that much fun either, but after a short offseason, we started to have these workout days where we, we came together as a team and worked out. And even in the height of summer, when we went to football camp, it was August, it was, it was hot, it was, it, was, it was murky, but we went. And we went, we practiced three times a day. I mean, we were up at five o'clock in the morning, on the field at six, off the field at 9.30, back on the field at one o'clock, off the field at three o'clock, back on the field at six o'clock. But it was that, it was that, um, that regimen that we went through. And all that time, we thought we were learning plays. But we did learn our plays. We knew what plays were run and all that stuff. But the real thing we were doing was building up endurance. Amen? Because Coach didn't tell us at first what was happening. But he told us that, you know, look, we might lose a game. But we're not going to lose fourth quarter. And we couldn't figure that out. What do you mean? We're not going to lose fourth quarter. So he kept saying, look, all this stuff we're doing now, so... You're practicing now in the middle of August. But when October comes, and you're going to be in the middle of those games, and sometimes it's just going to take a little bit extra to be able to beat that other team, it doesn't matter what play we run. You're going to have the endurance and the physical stamina to do it. Amen? So, long story short, we went 8-2-1 that year. Ended up losing the first round of the state playoffs. That's a whole nother story, but uh, we got there. But it wasn't so much that we, we won, and we won the first round of the state playoffs. It was the legacy that was set because for the next couple of years, all of our teams won. But it started with that foundation. So we're talking about revival today. We're building a foundation here. Not just for March 19th the 25th. We're building it for April and May and June and July. We're building it to re we're trying to reestablish a culture that was already here. Nothing new. We, this church has been in, in existence for 100 years. You think it's going to be in existence for 100 years if nobody exerted extra, extra, um, 
effort to get this place running? You think Sister Reed was out here by herself in 19, I think 17? She, if she could only see what we, where we are now, she would have been amazed. But we have a legacy of service, a legacy of mission, a legacy of ministry that we're just trying to rekindle some of the stuff that, that, we, that we need to rekindle, amen? We already have the tools. We've already proven we had to endure it. We proved it coming through COVID. We were still here. Yes, we were on Zoom, and yes, we were doing these other things, but financially, we stayed. Spiritually, we stayed. And now we're back, amen? amen? So now we need to use all these things. God has already showed us how he can bless us, how he already blessed us. Yes, we got wounds. Who plays a football game and doesn't, and doesn't get wounded? Who runs track and your legs don't hurt? Who plays basketball and, and, and eventually your back and your knees don't hurt? My coach had something for that too. He said, Kenny Davis? He always called me by my old name. Kenny Davis? I said, yes, Coach Dooley. He said, are you injured or are you hurt? What do you mean, Coach? He said, if you're injured, you can go sit down and we can take care of you. But if you're just hurting, you get your butt right back on that field, son. He says, we play with the little hurts. As a church, we play with the little hurts. As a individual, we play with the little hurts. So we got to get up. I heard the, the, the testimonies today of people losing loved ones and all that stuff. It is terrible. But guess what? God wants us to move forward. We can't sit and dwell. But we do have to use the scriptures. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So if that being the case, you don't think precious in the eyes of the Lord is, a, is, a, is the, the living also? He cares. Look, Revelation says, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Better read that. Better read that. It says that we're going to wipe away what? All tears. Talking about moving forward. We're going to wipe away all tears. And if God says all, it's all, amen? We serve a God. That if we allow him to, he will do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we ask and think, amen? And I don't know about you, but if he could do more, I want to see it. I don't even know what more is. I just, I just know it's more. You know, when you get to a point with faith where you don't even, you don't even know what it is. You just know he's going to do something. You know, you don't even, you don't even know that, um, you, know, you don't even worry no more. Because he says, look. You don't worry about sparrows and all these, they ain't got nothing to worry about. You're worried about your clothes? When I took the children of Israel through the wilderness, 40 years, sandals didn't wear out, clothes didn't wear out, food, didn't, food wasn't shorted. They all complained about, they didn't have no chicken. That's the only thing they had. When God is so good to you, the only thing you got to do is complain about what you don't have. That's, that's, that's God right there. But he had to show him. He said, you want chicken? I can eat chicken. He stuffed it down the mouth. But anyway, we serve a God who is looking out for our best interest. Amen? All we have to do is put ourselves in his hand. And let's go home. As we're looking, as we're going through revival, as we're going through our lives, as we're praying for our children as we're thankful for this thing and we're, we're praying for that situation and, we, and we, we, we can't figure out what's going on and we don't have the money to make things work and we're worried about our children going to school. Some of us are worried about our children after they graduate, what's going to happen? There's a lot of things going on, amen? We have to figure out a way to keep God first and Peter is talking about that too. If you're, going down in this, if you're going down in that same chapter, we're going to close out today with verses 12 through 19. And it says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Let him talk. 
Let him talk about you. That man jump out of here, he go get in his car on the Sabbath, and I don't know where he goes, but he comes back all happy. Let him talk. I got like four or five different invitations I could have went through. Nope, preacher, teaching, I ain't coming. But they know that. Say what you want. Ain't going to happen. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. So you can tell where you are spiritually, amen? If you can take what the devil has dished out and you can still have joy in spite of, amen? Joy doesn't necessarily mean happiness. People tend to get them confused. Happiness is a condition of thought. I mean, you can be happy about one thing and, and, and change the next second, but when you got joy, it's a whole different story. I mean, joy takes you through pain. Happiness can't do nothing for you in the middle of pain. Uh, it's crazy if you're trying to be happy in the middle of pain where you know you're hurting. Joy knows that there's somebody that's helping you through that pain, amen? But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Don't do nothing that. Don't do that. Don't suffer as a thief. Don't do that. Don't suffer as an evildoer. Don't do that. Or as a busybody in other people's matters. Shut your mouth and keep moving. Amen. You got to do anything for somebody, pray. But the sooner you say, I think, it's, it's messed up. Yet, if anyone, come on down with me, verse 16, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. 17, here we go. For time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not even obey the gospel of God? And now the question comes in verse 18. Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, that means if we barely get in, those who consider themselves righteous, which without Christ you're not, but that's a, another sermon, where will the godly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Isn't God good? Isn't God faithful? So if he's, that, if he's all that, act like it. Live like it. Give like it. Serve like it. Got three keys before we get out of here. Three keys are going to get us through this thing, amen? Key number one, stay faithful. Key number two, stay faithful. All right. Key number three, no matter what happens, stay faithful. Okay. These are challenging times. You know, we don't really need anybody to tell us how bad things are. We know how bad things are. But we do know that good things still happen in the middle of bad times. We are a nation of people who have survived bad times, and good things have always happened. You can run any nationality you want through America, and it's been that way. We've all figured out a way to su uh, survive and be successful in the middle of oppressions, in the middle of the segregation, in the middle of all those things that were trying to hold us back. God has made it to where we all have been benefited from being here in America. But we also know now that America is not what America is supposed to be. Scripture is going to show us that. And I'm not here to put anything down or whatever. I love America. I love America for what it's done for me. Some stuff that happened to me can only happen in America. You know? Some things that happen to you can only happen in America. But guess what? Time is coming to where we have to serve God. And sometimes that's going to mean turning your back on things that are not good for you. So to stay faithful, amen? Mm -hmm.